Slapstick Theater. David and Goliath. This is David. Hey. David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Elah. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Whoa, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya! David asked, Who is this Philistine anyway that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi! David said, don't worry about this Philistine, I'll go fight him. Saul said, there's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait. But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, all right, Go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Stories of the Bible Baby Moses This is Moses hey Moses was a descendant of Joseph's brother Levi hey. Joseph and his brothers had many children and grandchildren who lived happily in Egypt Eventually, a new pharaoh came to power who knew nothing of Joseph or what he had done this pharaoh feared the Israelites because there was a great number of them living in Egypt, so he wanted to put a stop to their prosperity. Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves. He made them work long, hard hours building up Egyptian cities. But his plan didn't work, and the Israelites grew more in number and in strength. So Pharaoh made a rule that no Israelite boy would be allowed to live in Egypt. This is where Moses' story begins. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. And she kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. When she saw the basket, hey. she sent her servant to get it. 
When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, Aww. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. <laughs> Excuse me. Then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. Uh -huh. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so, Moses, a Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. Stories of the Bible Josiah This is Josiah. Hey Josiah became king of Judah when he was only eight years old. Yep. Now Judah had a long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God, and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. Yeah! Eighteen years after Josiah became king, he sent one of his court secretary, Shaphan, to God's temple. Thank you. Many of the kings before Josiah did not take good care of God's house, so it was in need of repair. Hmm. Oh. While they were in the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, Hey! I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. <gasps> so Shaphan took the scroll back to King Josiah and read it to him. <laughs> when Josiah heard what was in the book, he was greatly upset. Oh, no! Because the people of Judah were not doing the things that God had asked them to do. And Josiah knew that God must be angry with Judah for not obeying his commandments. Josiah gathered together all the people of Judah to the temple and read the entire book of the covenant to them. That very day, Josiah and all the people promised that they would obey all of what God commanded with all their hearts and souls. We we promise you. Josiah went on to help Judah become a people fully committed to God. He tore down all the other temples and the idols that they had set up. Yeah. He got rid of all the people who were doing bad things all throughout Judah. Yep, yep, yep. And he did all that was commanded in God's book. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. Stories of the Bible God Speaks to Samuel This is Samuel. Hi! Samuel was the son of Hannah. Hannah prayed for God to give her a son, and God did. So Hannah gave Samuel back to God. See you, Samuel. Bye, Mom. And Samuel grew up in the temple serving under Eli, the priest. Hi, Eli. As Samuel grew up, he learned how to serve God from Eli. Samuel lived in the house of God, but he did not know God or what God's voice sounded like. In those days, messages from God were rare. <sighs> but one night after Eli had gone to bed, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle when suddenly God called out, Samuel! Huh? Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Did you call me? Not me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. Then God called out again, Samuel. Huh? And again, Samuel got up and ran to Eli asking, did you call me? Not me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. 
God called Samuel for a third time, Samuel. Huh? And Samuel went to Eli yet again. Hmm. After three times, Eli realized that God was trying to speak to Samuel. So Eli taught Samuel to say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Okay. Samuel went back to bed, and God came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. God told him many things about what would happen to Israel. As Samuel grew up, God was with him, and everything God spoke through Samuel came true. Samuel was seen as a great prophet of God because he could hear the voice of God, and he listened when God spoke to him. Stories of the Bible Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus. Hey, oh! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone! A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. The crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Hey, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. Bye, everyone. Sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. There you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. You got it. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. Stories of the Bible, Jesus and the Children. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. Choo, choo, choo. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. Uh, hold on there. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and blessed them. Stories of the Bible. Naaman is healed. This is Naaman who was a great leader in the army of the king of Aram. Though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he had leprosy, which made him have sores all over his body. Naaman had a maid in his house who was a young girl from Israel. This young girl served Naaman's wife. One day, the girl told Naaman's wife, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. Huh, really? 
Yep. So Naaman went to the king of Aram and told him what the young girl had said. Wow. The king told him to go see the prophet and gave him a letter to give the king of Israel. Yes, sir. Naaman went to Israel and brought with him many gifts. He gave the letter from his king to the king of Israel, which asked him to heal Naaman. After the king of Israel read the letter, he became very upset because the king knew he couldn't heal Naaman. He thought the king of Aram was trying to pick a fight with him. But there was a man of God in Israel named Elisha. Hey. He was a prophet and his job was to tell people what God wanted him to say. He also had done many miracles through God's power and healed people of sickness. So when he heard that the king of Israel was upset, he sent him a message that said, Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. Go on. So Naaman went to Elisha's house, but Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. This made Naaman angry because he thought Elisha would come to meet him and wave his hand over him to heal him as he called on God's name. He didn't understand why he would just need to wash in a river in Israel. So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. But his officers encouraged Naaman to do what Elisha said, and Naaman changed his mind. Okay. Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times, as Elisha had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was healed. Oh, wow! Then Naaman went back to find Elisha. Naaman said to Elisha, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel, so please accept a gift from your servant. But Elisha refused to accept a gift from Naaman, even after he offered a second time. So Naaman asked if he could take some of the dirt from Israel back home, and said he would only offer sacrifices to the one true God from then on. Elisha said, go in peace. So Naaman started home again, healed from his leprosy by the power of God. <laughs>